Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Physics 71. Uh, today, we will be discussing momentum and impulse. So as I said, um, last um, Thursday, uh, already we're already done with the first uh, conserved quantity that we'll be, we have considered, which is energy. We have solved, um, we have given expressions for the conservation of mechanical energy. And if ever there are uh, force, uh, non-conservative forces acting on a system of particles, we see that it is, uh, on the while mechanical energy is not conserved, the total total energy uh, can be uh, represented in terms of the mechanical energy and the work due to non-conservative force. If there is no net um, external work acting on a system, then uh, the, the dissipation or the change in mechanical energy is equal to um, the non-conservative work. So that's one of the conserved quantities that we will be discussing in, in this course. Now let's go to the second one, which is momentum and impulse. Uh, there's a reason why we why we need to define what momentum is, because there are some problems that we cannot solve using um, our techniques or our approaches that we have so far. Uh, so instead of um, solving it in your using your using your usual forces or using your usual energies, what we will do is we will use uh, we will define a new quantity called momentum, or I should say linear momentum, and that's uh, that will be important in solving some problems, for example, collisions. Okay. So the next three lectures will be about about momentum and impulse. Nadyo mahaba ang momentum, please bear with me. Uh, okay, so here's an outline of this discussion. The first one is we will define what linear momentum or um, momentum is, and then we discuss what momentum and impulse is. So there is a, um, if there's a change in the momentum of the system, you call it as the impulse uh, imparted on a system. Okay, so at the end of the session, you should be able to first um, define the linear momentum of a particle. What, is, what does momentum mean? In fact, Newton, we will see later that Newton actually uh, explained or um, uh, gave the actions or the loss of motion in terms of momentum, not in terms of, uh, of uh, forces. So, okay, ganun siya dinefine. Uh, not in terms of acceleration, I should say. Uh, it, it's still in terms of forces. And then next objective is we determine how the impulse of the net force acting on a particle causes its momentum to change so uh, impulse is the change in momentum using the so-called impulse momentum theorem we will see that later uh, we will derive some expression there expressions there and we will relate the momentum impulse average force and time of contact in a system and then final and um, finally we will also solve problems in 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 uh, involving momentum and impulse so now let me also recall the Newton's second law of motion. This will be important in our discussion of momentum. Uh, remember your Newton's second law, a non-zero net force acting on, uh, on an object causes the object to accelerate in the same direction as the net force. So um, it's usually given as your equation F equals MA, you already know that. But while again, your F here for a particle, F here is again net external. These are all net, uh, net external forces. Um, acting on the system causes a uh, uh, a system to accelerate. Uh, uh, we will generalize into this to systems. It's actually true, except that there is some assumptions there. Uh, natin yan when we go to center of mass, so don't burn. Uh, but it's still extendable to uh, to systems, um, not just particles. So, okay. So for each component, you can the, the, uh, you can because this is a vector equation, you can decompose it into different components, x, y, and z. Uh, alam nyo na yan, nag-solve na nag tayo ng maraming problems regarding Newton's second law, nag-drawing na kayo ng free body diagram, hanggang ngayon baka nag-drawing pa rin ng free body diagram kasi exams, exam, uh, may exam part pa rin tayo ngayon. Uh, you know that already. Now, the question is, um, remember, acceleration is related to velocity. And there, you we can, mod, um, we can uh, motivate our discussion of momentum by considering that um, before we go to that, um, let's go to some uh, some questions. So, okay, so alam niyo, of course, lagi niyo namang nababalita sa TV yan, may mga car crashes na nangyayari, di ba? Um, part na ng police reports yan, for example, nagkakaroon ng aksidente. Now, the question now here is this. So, when a car crashes, how do we know how much damage it may take and in which direction it will move after the collision? So a car crash is an example of a collision in a more physics sense. Uh, the, the idea now is uh, medyo mahirap mag-predict ng, ng final positions and final velocities because the forces, number one, the forces are are large. Number two, the forces are acting very fast. Sobrang bilis ng pag-act ng mga forces dyan. Remember, a car crash is about uh, maybe at most 10 seconds 
Grabe naman yung 10 seconds of collision na yun, no? But ang bilis talaga, mga seconds lang yung time yan para mag-collide yung dalawang objects. Therefore, it's really difficult to determine the forces acting on a system when, when a car crashes, when a, when a, when a collision occurs. So, um, instead of going to collision, to forces, if, instead of approaching it using Newton's second law, pero na, na highly improbable to, to solve, medyo mahirap siya solve, Remember, forces here are now functions of time. Medyo uh, ayaw natin usually ng forces na functions of time. Hindi natin masyadong gusto yan <laughs> na ang force may function of time. Instead of doing that, uh, madaling malaman kung saan pupunta yung direction ng object. Kasi makikita mo naman kung saan yung direction ng object eh, after ng banggaan. <laughs> okay, after ng collision, you can determine the velocities of that object. Now, the question is, can we have a quantity that um, can relate the initial and final velocities of the system But instead of, um, remember, velocity is a kinematical variable. But here, we have um, a, a dynamics happening, uh, a, for, a change in, in um, forces happening. Now, the question is, can we direct our attention to velocities and forces? Can we obtain a relationship between force and velocity? The answer is, of course, of course yes, yung point ng lecture na to. So, two new concepts, momentum and impulse, will allow us to answer these questions. Okay? Questions. So that's the that's the motivation. Why do we need to study momentum? Because there are problems, like for example, collision problems, which can, um that can't be solved using ordinary, using your usual um um forces or energies. In fact, even energy di mo masasolve nyan. Because hindi naman conserved in general lang energy sa collision, di ba? Pag nagbanggaan, may dissipation of force of energy siya, di ba? And the forces involved are in general non-conservative because they are functions of time, not necessarily. There are explicit functions of time. Um, uh, this is a function of position. Okay? Questions? May tanong ba? May tanong? Are there any questions? None? Okay, I hope this is clear. Okay. Now let's go to linear momentum. Okay. Now, as I said, your F equals MA, you can be written um, if M is constant, in general, M is not constant, but we will not deal with that. Into that when we go uh, in physics 71, uh, there are, there is a section in Young and Friedman about um, rocket propulsion, but and um, um, systems in continuously varying mass. We won't do with that in this course for now. Nothing on us. So um, assuming that the mass is constant, we got of course here is the second law. But your acceleration can be written in terms of velocity. Remember, acceleration or I should say instantaneous acceleration is just a time derivative of their velocity function. So ganyan yung cura niya, di ba? Now, and since mass is constant in this in this case, you can place your mass into that um, into that de derivative and say that okay, um, I have an f uh, a net external force is equal to the time derivative of some product m times v vector, and that m times v vector is what we will define as our linear momentum. M v is the linear momentum defined by p. Okay, p vector is the linear momentum. Okay, questions? May tanong dito? Ang ginawa lang, pinasok lang yung um, m sa derivative because it is a function. Uh, it is, uh, sorry, it is a constant. <laughs> sa ko. It is a constant. Na? Okay? Clear ba? Clear? I hope this is clear. Okay, let's define what momentum is. So, so linear momentum. Linear momentum, P equals mv. Um, P is, again, is a vector quantity. Uh, so, we will see here that um, m here is always, always positive. Wala namang negative na mas, di ba? Okay, so... One thing that you can explain here is that P is um, parallel to V. So um, the momentum of a particle is parallel to its velocity. So it's also the measure of the quantity of motion. Uh, we will see in the next few slides that it's actually the term used by Newton in this book. It's the measure of the quantity of motion. And it depends, of course, obviously it depends on the mass of the object and the speed. So for example, if you have a car um, that um, that's fast and a, bit, and a truck that is relatively slow kung, kung mas, uh, mas ma if we have the same speed pala we have a, ma a car and a truck with the same speed mas mahirap pa pa, 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 pa paanda rin yung mas malaking truck obviously because it has higher mass and therefore to change that velocity you have larger force needed okay mas malaking mas mahirap pa pagganahin yung or paanda rin yung isang mas malaki mas malaking object because it has higher mass so at the same time if you have two two cars with the same mass but different velocities it is much harder to um to stop one um car that's uh that's faster kasi nga mas malaki yung magiging velocity mo okay 
it has something to do with the linear momentum of the object. Kaya siya tinatawag na quantitative motion or inertia and motion. Some books will write as inertia and motion. Especially dun sa mga um, dun sa mga more elementary physics textbooks. So, okay. It's a vector quantity, obviously. So, uh, it, it points parallel to the direction of the velocity. So, the SI unit is kilogram meter per second. Unfortunately, walang special name ang unit sang momentum. Uh, just kilogram meter per second. That's the SI unit for momentum. Okay, questions. Uh, may tanong? May tanong ba? Okay. Now, um, as I said, uh, Newton has written in his Principia the term quantity of motion. In fact, it's in the first page of the book. Um, Principia, as I said in, uh, I think, uh, in the in the discussion on on on, on Newton's laws, uh, Principia is like a geometry textbook. It's more of a geometry textbook than a physics textbook, it's, and it lo it looks uh, more mathematical in the sense that um, the the pages are like um, actions of a of a mathematics text. Puro proving. <laughs> Puro proving siya. Now, um, he started his book on the definitions. And the first definition is this. The quantity of matter is the measure of the same arising from its density and bulk, con bulk conjointly. Basically, he says that this is just mass equals, in a way, para mong isipin mass equals density times volume lang. Bulk there means volume. Okay? So, yun yung, ang una yung definition ay definition of what mass is. Now, the second one, the second definition, of, of course, alam na natin yung mass equals density times volume. The second one is, I think, more important. The quantity of motion is the measure of the same arising from the velocity and quantity of matter conjointly. Velocity here is, of course, we know that is the usual velocity. The quantity of matter here is your mass, so, based on the first definition. And hence, this definition too describes the momentum of an object. Momentum of an object. Why is this definition important? This definition is, is important because we will see in page 13 and 14, which um, in the next slides, that the laws of motion are expressed, in fact, in terms of the quantity of motion. So, for example, law one, pakita ko lang sa inyo for completion, everybody continues in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a right line. Right line means in straight line, unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed upon it. So, this is basically your law of inertia, um, written in a language um, um, that's translated from Latin. Remember, Principia is in, written in Latin. Uh, uh, by I forgot who you know, translated it. Uh, but the point here is, this is how it's original written. And now the second one, this is more important than the second law, the second law or the um, law of acceleration. The change of motion is proportional to the motive force impressed, and it is made in the direction of the line, right line in which that force is impressed. What again? You have you have change in motion is proportional to the motive force. Motive force sir, is the net external force acting on the system. Whereas, what's the change in motion? According to definition two of in written in page one of the of the book, that's basically your momentum. Hence, we have this equation: F is dp dt. So instead of writing Newton's principle in terms of accelerations, it's written in terms of linear momentum. Yung gusto ko sabihin. Okay, gets ba? Gets ba? Nakuha? I hope this is clear. Clear naman? Okay, I hope this is clear. Okay. Now, we have third law. Just for completion, I'll just express um, what third law is. Of course, you know this already. To every action, there is e always a post and equal reaction. So you have your action-reaction pairs. Ingat pala dun, speaking of, sa exam. Or the, the, or the mutual actions of two bodies upon each other are always equal and directed to contrary parts. So um, it only describes what? Um, an action to action force. So they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction in more modern terms. <laughs> in more modern language, basically, yun lang sinasabi na tong third law. Um, gusto ko lang pakita dito, but ko pinakita ngayon to, is that, again, um, Newton's second law is not written originally in terms of acceleration. It is written originally in terms of momentum. Okay? Sige. Questions? Uh, may tanong ba? May tanong? Wala? Wala. Okay. 